People are screaming panic in a sports car world now, but why do I think it's still a good time to sell? Let's find out. What's up YouTube, car boss here. We talk about everything cards, money, investing. All right, let's go. So if you're hearing the buzz about the sports car market going on a downward spiral, just type sports car crash on YouTube and see what you get. What you'll find is content after content, just talking about how bad the market is at the moment. Everything is going down. The crash is coming. Run to the hills. What should we do? And stuff like that. Basically, everybody's talking the same thing, right? Number one, there's less new money that's coming into the system. Number two, will it dip further? And number three, don't panic sell your cars. Just wait it out and see what happens. But if you just summarize the key thing that's on the back of people's mind, right? It just sums down to one word, fear. And why people are afraid is because a lot of new investors who came into the market early 2020 have not seen these kind of corrections before. So let us dial back a bit, shall we? The 2019-2020 season was quite a highly anticipated one. It was uh, Luca's second year, Zion's rookie year. And there's a lot to look forward to. Problem was, we had Corona and things took a halt when the season was suspended on March 11th. And the car market, uh, for NBA at least, kind of followed the season in tandem. So it was steaming pretty relatively well in the early part of the season until March when things got halted. And it dipped slightly, like for a couple of weeks, and it jumped back quickly after that. So when you look at what happened this year, when you had the Michael Jordan Fleer um, PSA 10 rookie car hitting all-time high of 750k, and everybody knew it's not going to be sustainable, and it did retrace a bit, but nobody could expect that the retrace led to literally a free fall in prices. So I'm not sure whether or not um, you are in this position, but if you're not, you got to imagine what it must feel like having 20 to 40 percent of your portfolio value get wiped off in a matter of months and the big question that would loom over your head would be will this ever end will this ever turn around essentially it's just fear in the market now while all those concerns are true i do believe that there are opportunities at this present time you just gotta know what to do so basically there's no right or wrong answer to this you could just sit pat and wait it out, like what most people are doing, or you could sell into the market. Now, what I meant by selling, it's not like fire sale and you know get rid of your holdings uh, foolishly um, into the downward pricings at the moment, but it's meant to take advantage of whatever capital that you have at the moment and to avoid uh, over leveraging yourself and putting more capital than you can afford into this market due to its uncertainty and at the same time to set yourself up for a better return as compared to just sitting and waiting things out so my short-term strategy and i emphasize the phrase short term is to flip my psa 9s and to consolidate them into psa 10s and you're probably wondering why is that a strategy at this point in time like I could do it anytime, even when the market is hot. But why do I choose at this juncture to consolidate my PSA 9s? And the main reason is PSA 10s for a lot of cards have never been cheaper uh, compared to the past. So of course, if you had cash, uh, it's, it's quite a good time to buy. And you would see definitely good returns going forward on your cash purchases. But today's video is all about understanding how to weather the uncertainties. So I guess if you had just fixed $5,000 of capital, it's probably not advisable to just dump into a couple of cards, right? And to find a way to diversify um, the cash into several different holdings, plus upgrade whatever holdings that you have. And that's the strategy that I employ at the moment. So I'm gonna take you through one illustration. Sometime in end of April, the price of a PSA 10 of a Kobe Tops 138 is roughly about $5,000. Uh, 
and you could get also a PSA 9 for about $1,000. So roughly, it, it's roughly about five PSA 9s to a PSA 10. Fast forward less than 30 years later, PSA 10 Kobe's are now three grand, whereas the PSA 9s are about 650. So if you do the math, it's roughly about four and a half PSA 9s. Now, you're probably gonna laugh at a half, but it does mean something right here. So if you did had four PSA 9 Kobe's on the side, in a combined value of 2,600, you would need to add about $400 of cash to make up the one PSA 10. And that 400 cash is basically your capital deployment during this market, and that's your upside as well. So in short, what does this all mean by upgrading your 9s to your 10s? Well, the 10 itself has a lot of good things going for it. So uh, as you all know, PSA 10s are normally first movers in the market and PSA 9 prices would follow. So therefore, when the market recovers, it's normally the 10 that will see the uh, price trickling up first before the 9s. And having a bigger ticket item in your portfolio makes uh, more sense uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, uh, if you're selling through a consignment house, such as myself, the fees generally gets lower as the price point moves higher. So obviously, if you have a PSA 10 versus a PSA 9, you generally see savings of between 1% to 2%. And of course, secondly, through consolidation, you actually thinning out your portfolio, having a leaner stock holding. And if it does apply to you, it does save you some storage costs. So coming back to the start of the video, where we talk about why is it a good time to sell and how does it relate to consolidation as what we discussed earlier. So by all means, um, this, what I just illustrated, it's not a trade, right? So, uh, you know, I don't think that you could find somebody on a trade floor. I mean, you could, you know, to swap your four Kobe's plus some cash on for one PSA 10. You could do that on shows, but what if uh, this was all done online? And so if that was the case, you would need to essentially sell your four PSA 9 Kobe's at a quick pace in order to raise the cash and to pick up the PSA 10. Now, your question would be, what if you sell and the PSA 10 is not there, right? So, and would you, would you gamble to take the PSA 10 first and find buyers for your PSA 9? And the answer to that question is basically how liquid your PSA 9s are in the current market. So if you took the Kobe 138 as an example, it's a pretty liquid uh, investment, the PSA 9s, and with multiple buyers and sellers each day on eBay. So it's safe to say that if you were to put any of the Kobe's on market, you have no trouble selling it. Therefore, it's safe to actually go in first for the desired PSA 10, followed by the selling of your PSA 9s. Whereas on the flip side, if you have a less desired card, just let's say a Darius Garland Prism Silver PSA 9 and multiple copies of it, I wouldn't think that it's a popular investment item. And therefore, even though you're doing the right thing by upgrading it to a PSA 10, you might be hard pressed in locating sufficient number of buyers to take off the nines from you. But regardless of the way you're doing it, the key here is speed. Prices are changing you know, every single day, right? So you don't want to be caught in a situation whereby you know you can either buying high on the PSA 10s and forced to sell low on the PSA 9s, which defeats the purpose of this exercise. Hence, for me personally, I like to take my time to hunt the PSA 10s first and try to look for the best deal available. And I'm not afraid to, you know, take a bit of credit, take on a bit of credit risk on a PSA 10 while I dispose of my PSA 9s. But most, more importantly for me is I wanna lock in a strong PSA 10 at a very strong price. So in conclusion, contrary to what most people are saying, you know, at this point in time, uh, not to sell the cards, I am a seller in this market, especially on the strategy I just mentioned earlier. And of course, I'm still a buyer in this market because I can't emphasize anymore like how low PSA 10 prices are and what good opportunity to buy at this moment. 
So if you guys like this video and found it very useful, do like and subscribe for more content in the future. I will be putting up similar videos, so do watch out for that. Thanks and have a great day.